Once the locomotive is sat for the requisite length of time, it will slowly accelerate out of the section and will trundle along to the other end of the shuttle loop. Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jenny Kirk and we're up here in the loft on Weir Yard. And today I've got a little bit of a project that I want to uh, show you. Now this is a product that uh, was sent over from DCC Concepts. You may remember me mentioning this in the Zen Black Decoder review video. And this is the uh, ABC Slow Stop Shuttle Modules. Now they sent over a pack of three and I decided at the time actually that there was a lot to cover to actually fit these to a layout, certainly retrofitting them to a layout. So I said at the time that this was something that I wanted to cover in a video to itself. And now here it is. Now DCC is one of those areas where I think for a lot of people there's a different unique selling point that kind of sells the concept to them. And they tend to go from DC to DCC. Now for me actually it was the sound fitting that I really liked. I liked the sound locos that I heard. And it was only later on that I actually found that there were other aspects of DCC which were worth a lot more to me than the sound. And actually, in many respects, the sound, it does get a bit repetitive after a while. What I do like about DCC is the fact that you can have effectively one section for your entire layout. So it does simplify some of the wiring and it means that any locomotive can have access all areas without having to work out isolating sections and to switch certain tracks between certain locomotives and controllers. I also like the fact that I could have loads of locomotives parked around the layout and not really have to worry about having them on insulated sections. That for me as well was another big sell. But when DCC Concepts sent over these ABC shuttle modules, what I actually found was another unique selling point that for me is almost as important, if not more important, than any of those other DCC unique features that I have mentioned. And this is the ability really to set a locomotive up to just shuttle backwards and forwards and to be able to change the length of time it sits at each end, uh, acceleration, deceleration, all of these things. And it means that on a layout like Weir Yard, where I've got four continuous running roads, I can actually add in extra locomotives doing extra things that don't need user intervention to keep doing that. Now I did a test fitting of these on uh, one of the inclines and actually got it to work very, very simply. And this was kind of a proof of concept, so I didn't actually film it. But I've been really pleased with the results. So I really want to show you how I went about doing that. And I'm going to set up another shuttle on the layout. And I'm going to do it using the uh, shuttle modules that were sent over from DCC Concepts. So in association with our channel sponsor, Trainomatic, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through the full fitting of these to the layout and a few little details about their operation. Now, if this is something that is of great interest to you, then we've got a link to DCC Concepts down in the description box where you can find, amongst other things, these DCC shuttle modules. But I'm really excited to show you these, so come with me and let's get these installed. <laughs> Now, this is the pack with the modules in. Now, it comes in, uh, you can buy these in a variety of different methods, either singly, with a decoder, or in these uh, multiple packs as well. So this pack that uh, DCC Concepts very kindly sent over was a three pack. And I've utilized one of these already when I was just making sure that I understood how it all worked. And I set that up on this gradient that goes between the upper and lower levels of Weir Yard. So you've probably seen on the live stream a locomotive shuttling up and down there. I've got an 01 from Hornby and also Hornby Class 71, which uh, are quite happy to shuttle up and down there. 
and I'm retrofitting these to an existing layout. Uh, if you were adding these in from the outset, it is much, much easier, and you could use something like the SL11 Pico isolating rail joiners to be able to make the gaps you need. But for me, like I guess many people, we're adding this in to a layout that's already been built. And you can see here the gap that I cut in the rail at the top of the section. So I needed a gap there and then up and round to there as well. I cut another gap and then soldered the control wire into this. And that's effectively a gapped section. And uh, according to the instructions that I followed, that's all we need to do at each end. Now you can use these modules as a braking module as well. They don't have to be part of a shuttle. You can set them up using the handy little jumpers that are on the board um, to be able to set them up as say an intermediate station stop. And you can also interlock them with the signals so that when the signal is set to red or a point is set against that part of the track, it will bring a train to a slow, prototypically correct controlled stop and leave them waiting until such time as the way ahead is clear as signaled either by the signals or by the point changing. So there's a lot of auto automation options that you can add in using these. But what I'm looking at doing today is to add an extra shuttle over and above the one that I've already proved works up there. And what I actually want is I want a train to be able to shuttle through uh, the actual marshalling yard and back again and to be able to do that without any user input. I'm not really one for actually driving trains so this is something that I want to automate. So down here these three tracks their main tracks go all the way around. This loop here loops with this track but it is quite long so it runs from this point here just above the, uh, the bridge with the water. There is a signal here as well and what I might do is look into interlocking that signal with the module so it can also be used not just as a shuttle, but as something that uh, trains can wait there until the signal changes and then proceed. So there's a lot of different options going on. So what I'm going to have to do is gap the track in two places, large enough for the locomotive to come into section, slow down, and stop. If your section is too short, the locomotive will reach the end, cross the gap, and then will just accelerate away. It will effectively ignore the section because it hasn't come to a full stop. Around the other side of the layout, now if, if I were to follow that loop all the way around, eventually it comes down to where you see these points here. So it's that line there. So what I want to do is to put a section just there before it reaches the point. Now it's going to be quite tricky to add a gap section where the points are, so I'm not even going to go there. But what I want to do is to actually make sure that uh, I can add the, the locomotive in. In fact, one of the options, I'm just looking back along the track, which might be better, would be to get it to come down this track here, and then I can get it to stop behind the signal box and I think for operational purposes that would probably work out a lot better. So what I'm going to need to do is to put those gaps in the track and initially what I did on the trial fitting was to actually use a hacksaw blade and it was quite hard work and you can just about see where the scenery has taken a little bit of a hit, not too bad, but I wanted to avoid that. So what I've done is I've borrowed from my father a Dremel. And you can see here it's been fitted with a uh, slitting disc, quite narrow, and Dremels are world renowned for actually being the perfect tool for this job. So what I'm hoping is that I can gap the track and do it really, really easily with this. I've just got to be careful it doesn't snatch the track as it cuts through and rip it from the sleepers. But I'm going to go ahead now I'm going to mark up and I'm going to gap the track sections ready to start wiring in these modules. So I've gone ahead now and gapped the track with the Dremel just there. And if we move back just down there as well, you can just see that gap in the track. And actually using the Dremel is so much easier than using a hacksaw. So what we see now is that gap in between 
Um, that's a dead section at the moment. I'm going to have to drill a hole, solder a wire to that, and that's going to feed back to the first of our modules. So here is our module, and you can see there we've got some jumpers, which we can use to set it to either be an intermediate stop, if we want it to be part of a shuttle, and then we've also got our connectors there, and that will take a feed from the power bus for that particular side where we've gapped the track um, so that it's got a power source and then also back to that gap in the track and then effectively this module controls the power to that rail which has been gapped from the rest of the layout. So what then happens is with the decoder set in the locomotive to react to the shuttle it will reach that uh, break in the track, go into that section, and then effectively this tells that decoder, it puts a signal into the uh, track feed, it tells it to slow down and stop, and then wait for a length of time before reversing direction out of the actual section. Now you can put one of these dedicated to each individual section, or if, like me, you're not in a position where another train is going to be likely to wander into that section and be accidentally triggered, you know, basically these tracks are completely separate from the rest of the layout, then you can actually wire both gapped sections on a shuttle to the same module. And that then means that your pack of three will do three different uh, shuttle areas rather than just one and a half or one with an intermediate and it's a much more economical way of using these modules. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to solder the dropper wires to that section and you may also need to make sure that there is still a good track feed to the section either side because if you've cut the track in the middle then you may find that the power is no longer getting to the part of the layout beyond. So it's well worth to just make sure that your electrical continuity is up to scratch and uh, you don't introduce any dead spots. When it comes to setting up the module, the instructions are very clear and very simple and are printed on the back of the card that comes on the back of the blister pack. If you need any additional instructions, for example, on which CVs to change on the Zen Black decoder, to enable it to work with the uh, module, then refer to the manual that comes with the decoder. The next step is to use a drill. And what we're going to be doing is adding in just the feed that we can then solder to the track. And uh, this connects the gap track to the module and to the baseboards. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to drill a hole through and then we'll get on with the soldering. And with the wire now soldered to the rail, we can hide the solder with some paint so it won't be quite so obvious. We just get the length of wire and feed that down to the underside of the layout where we can pull it through neatly. And then this attaches to the module. As per the instructions to set up shuttle, we need to move the red header off the pins that it comes on and move them down to the second set like this. We've got the module attached underneath the layout so you can see there T2 which you can see there with the red wire is connected back to the power bus for the same side as the rail is that we've gapped and then T1 which is the top terminal that wire goes back and is the one we've just soldered to the gapped rail. Now that means that that section is complete we can now go on and add a second section at the other end of that line. And I'm actually going to wire it all the way back around the layout to this. So the T1 will have a second wire which goes round and is soldered to the gapped rail on the other side of the layout. The reason for this is that it means I only need one of these modules to control the entire shuttle because that locomotive cannot be in both sections at the same time. So it doesn't matter that we've got one module controlling two sections. If you had multiple locomotives running around, you couldn't do that. And the reason for this is because 
If two locomotives are effectively in the same section at the same time, it will confuse the module and the decoders and your shuttle won't work. One important note to make is that be advised that the terminals T1 and T2 on the modules do not match up with those shown on the instructions. As you see there, T2 to the top, T1 to the bottom, and the other way around on the physical module. Go off them as they are listed on the physical board itself. If you get them the wrong way around, your shuttle will not work as expected. The actual text of the instructions is correct. This is the area that I've chosen, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to gap the rail to give me a big enough section for a locomotive to slow down and stop. We have to make sure that the side of the track that we gap is the same side as the other section. If you cross them over, all you will end up doing is having a section that doesn't work and may even end up shorting out your entire DCC bus and nothing will work. So I'm going to get the Dremel and I'm going to gap the track. There's one and up here there's another one. And we can hide any of the gouges to the ballast quite easily with a little bit of a dirty wash afterwards. Now I have to just drill a hole, solder a wire to this section and we're going to feed that wire all the way back around the layout to the same module that we wired the other section up to. The wire is now soldered in and fed back to the module and uh, this now means that the entire setup of the hardware at least is complete. What comes next is to uh, tweak a CV on the Zen Black decoder and that we do easily on the programming track. So we go to program on the program track, enter and this is for this particular system and then we go all the way through to CV. We pick 27, enter, and it asks us what data to put in. We pick 4, enter, we hear it program, and now that is complete and ready to go. So with the Zen Black decoder in this locomotive, that is now ready to run and will shuttle backwards and forwards. One word of warning at this point is uh, if your locomotive doesn't respond as expected, turn it around because this does seem to be handed. If you put it on the wrong way around, what I have found is the locomotive will stop in the section but will then restart in the same direction instead of reversing. If this happens to you, then just pick the locomotive up and turn it around the other way and your problem should be solved. We're now ready for the test. We've got a locomotive here already programmed. It comes into the section and we can see it slow down and stop. The locomotive will now stay in the section for the amount of time that it has been instructed to. This can be changed on one of the other CVs if you wish it to. Check in the instructions for the Zen Black for details on this. Once the locomotive is sat for the requisite length of time, it will slowly accelerate out of the section and will trundle along to the other end of the shuttle loop. When the locomotive reaches the other end of the shuttle, it will keep coming. And then when it enters the section, as soon as it clears that rail gap, it will begin its deceleration, slowing down, coming to a halt. It will then wait for the same length of time before it sets off in the other direction. If you want an intermediate stops within the shuttle, you can do this with additional modules, cutting and gapping the rails long enough for the locomotive to come to a halt, and then setting its function using those onboard jumpers on the headers. That way you can have a shuttle backwards and forwards with one or more station or signal stops on the way. Well, I hope that video was really useful to you. Don't forget that we've got a link in the description box down below. It takes you to where you can find your own 
DCC uh, concept shuttle modules as well if this is a project that you are interested in taking on for your own layout. And certainly if you've got a small shunting layout, this could be a perfect way of automating that. But also you can add extra functions into a larger layout such as Weir Yard up here in the loft. But it's been great to have your company. I've thoroughly enjoyed showing you all the steps through this project. So you stay safe now. And until next time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And uh, happy modeling. This is me, Jenny Kirk, saying bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to... Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian Smith, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Trish Bits, Sparky 107107, George Botterini, Andy Finch, Chris Moss, Robert Sears, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grant Line Products, Sam Yates, and Dale Williams. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.